This contraption you're looking at is designed to quick carbonate soda water up to 60 to 90 PSI in a half an hour. And if you've ever brewed beer and you've tried to carbonate stuff, you know that it takes a long time. And yes, you can buy quick carbonators, but they're only good up to like generally 30 PSI. And because we're looking at the old history of the soda fountain where they used to carbonate things up to 150 PSI, I'm really curious what happens when we get to that level. So this is the build I've done. So let's talk about it and I'll explain how it works. I'm Darcy O'Neill and this is Art of Drink. So what exactly is this device? Well, basically we're just circulating water this way and injecting CO2 into here and increasing the surface area of the carbon dioxide to the water to rapidly carbonate stuff. As I mentioned in the intro, sometimes it could take three to four days to carbonate something up to like 15 to 20 PSI because the surface area of your keg, if you've got your liquid in here and your CO2 pressure here, you've got a very small contact area. So what you're really doing for this, and this is the magic of it, is we have a carbonation stone and this one's two microns, easy to get at a beer store. And what it's going to do is pump out millions of little bubbles of carbon dioxide that are going to contact the water. And as we circulate it, that is going to increase the surface area dramatically and carbonate this within 30 minutes. And the nice thing is you can do a full keg in 30 minutes or you can daisy chain these and probably do three to four of them in an hour. So you can have, you know, even five or eight but within an hour or two, you can have 200 liters of carbonated water at 60 PSI. So if you're a restaurant or a bar owner who wants to do this, this is what you need. Other than the carb stone, there's not much to this. Uh, these are just basically duo tight fittings. I use them because they are good to 150 PSI. At least the EVA barrier tubing is. And this reinforced, uh, I believe it's fiberglass reinforced vinyl tubing is good to 250 PSI. I just like a little extra operating pressure on that. Now these tubing, this vinyl tubing you find for most beer lines is good to only 60 PSI. So that's the operating pressure. The burst pressure is often three times that. So even if you had this and you're doing 60 PSI, you'd probably be fine. But I do like the EVA barrier and these fittings. It's basically like Lego. You just stick things together. So if you liked Lego as a kid, you definitely like this. Now there's not much to it. This is just a rims tube used in brewing. They're 30, 40 bucks. And all of this I will put on my Patreon page with a sketch of the layout and all the parts. Again, you can shrink this down. I've made it actually much bigger than it needs to be just to be able to show you. You know, I can point to things better and you can understand it better. But the most important parts are this check valve. So because we're pressurizing this to 60 PSI, you do not want water to go back into your regulator. So you can get this check valve. They're like $6 Canadian. They're not a big deal. And they just connect in line and it will not allow any liquid to go back and they're good to 100 PSI. So pretty much all we need to do, even if you're pressurizing up to 100 PSI, this will do the job. This T here leads to a basically a valve and this, which is a, when you're done with the system, when you're done carbonating, you do need to pressurize your lines because you can pop these off. The keg will stay pressurized and the lines will stay pressurized. But unless you want to pop the lines off and have water go everywhere, you need a, a way to pressurize this. So this is just a valve that you can open up and drain into a bucket. Depressurize all your lines and not make a mess. More of a convenience. But again, the two micron size, you can get these in five mi or 0.5 micron bubble size, but that may be overkill. Two microns, plenty. And just to note, I often see videos where people have their CO2 tank just you know, lazily sitting on a bench. These things go off rockets if you break the valve. So if this were to tumble off my table here because I knocked it, uh, it could turn into a rocket that would punch a hole in the wall. Just take a little, you can use a bungee cord. I just happen to have this cord here that I just tie it to something so that uh, that's just a safety measure. And again, all of this is really safe to use. Your municipal water pressure is 80 PSI, and we're just pressurizing all of this to 60 PSI. 
So everything we're using is well within the margins of what you would find in your house. So you don't have to worry about the pressure. There's gonna be no catastrophic explosions. If anything does happen, it's gonna be the release of a line. And it's just gonna spray water everywhere. It will make a mess, but it's doubtful that anything's gonna catastrophically explode. Lots of safety margin in this. So don't be concerned if you have any issues working with pressure. Now, the last thing we need to talk about before we get pressurizing and carbonating is your pump. Now you can buy Blickman ones and they basically are just a, a T with some connectors on it and they use a small pump, but it's only good up to 50 PSI. And I don't even think that pump's designed to go up to 50 PSI uh, for functional. It's really only for carbonating beer because we're doing soda and eventually I'm gonna go up to you know, 90, 100, maybe even 120 PSI on these just to see what this old soda fountain carbonation level was. I bought this pump 80 bucks on Amazon, so not a big investment, but it is good to 160 PSI. They're often used in showers on RVs or camper trailers. And the flow rate on it is four to seven liters per minute. So roughly a gallon to a gallon and a half per minute, which means when you're doing a 19 liter keg or five gallon keg, it will take you know three to six minutes to circulate all the water. So within a half an hour period, we're gonna basically circulate this roughly five times in full contact with the CO2. Again, I will list this on Patreon, but diaphragm pumps are better for high pressure. If you have a brewing pump with an impeller in it, they're not great for this because again, we have a fair amount of pressure going through this and they're not really designed for that. Now, the last thing before we get carbonating is you need to have our pressure reducer on the inlet side of your pump. Now you can buy these, uh, they're often used for irrigation. So your municipal water can be up to 80 PSI. And so what this does is basically you hook it up to a hose and it reduces the pressure from 80 PSI down to 25 PSI. So you can have 25 PSI coming in and then you know 100 going out. And that just works better for the diaphragm pump and diaphragm pumps can run dry. So it's not a big deal. You will have cold water coming into this, so it will not overheat. Most of these pumps come with uh, automatic shutoff protection. And speaking of shutoffs, uh, most pumps don't actually have an on off switch. So I just bought a outlet with a remote control so I can turn this thing on and off. And if I turn it on, I'll pump water in there. But, but that basically makes it a lot easier to use this so you can turn it off instead of just pulling the plug on it because in a normal operation, these just shut off when they hit 160 PSI in their pressure tank. So you can buy these pressure reducers for like 20 bucks and I just happen to have a metal one and it works perfectly fine. It does actually a good job of reducing the pressure into here and getting high pressure out and the circulation is fine. Everything I've done here, I've tested and it works wonderfully. So let me show you how to do it. So one of the first things you do, I want to charge the system a little bit to get air out of here. Obviously, if you've seen my video, previous video on the two most important factors on making carbonated water, you'll know that air is your enemy. So I basically just fill this up and you can get it to basically prime your pump. And you don't need to fill up the whole thing. You're obviously gonna have some air in your line, but that won't overly affect this because there's just a small amount. But in general, if you want, you can actually pre-purge everything with CO2, but this actually works quite well. And I find I get really good carbonation levels out of it. So basically what you wanna do is put your, this back on and clamp it down. Now, when you clamp these, they only need to be hand tight. You don't need to use a wrench to do it. We'll just get it until it, the, uh, the level is good. And then once that's on, you're just basically going to connect it to your in side of your keg. And that's just going to basically make sure that everything goes where it's supposed to. Now the out side has a dip tube in it. So what you want to do is put your out on that. So it's going to pull water from the bottom of the keg through here, and then it's going to basically spray it into the keg. There's no dip tube on this side. 
And that is basically the setup. So once everything's hooked up and tightened, you just want to turn on your pump and you can get water flowing. And then you want to start your CO2. So I've got this set at 30 PSI to start and you'll see CO2 running through here and it gets a little bit bubbly. And that's basically what you're going to do and you're going to let this run for half an hour or more depending on the size of your keg. I would say if a 55 liter keg, so a sand key keg would probably be done in an hour. So now that this has been carbonating for half an hour, you can basically disconnect this part and this part. Now remember, these lines are still pressurized or possibly pressurized. So you just release the gas. And that basically releases the pressure. And now you can just drain these lines. So now that everything is depressurized, except for our keg, you can clean all this up without having everything blow up all over the place. So do clean it up, because as this warms up, the CO2 will come out of solution. So you can kind of leave this cap off and it will be fine. But uh, generally clean up sooner than later, because otherwise the, uh, these will repressurize. So let me show you how pressurized this is. So now just a quick word, you can get these 20 or $30 quick carbonation apparatuses. They just fit in the top of your corny keg and have an air stone. These are actually still pretty slow. So you have to adjust the PSI on your regulator very slowly. So you release some bubbles until it stops, release some more. So it can take a while with this. These are a good quick solution if you're doing beer, but when you're getting up into the high pressures that soda has, it's better to do the method that I just showed you. But let me show you how pressurized this is after 30 minutes of carbonation. So now I have a chilled glass here, and this is just a Pluto gun. There's no flow control on this, so it's just gonna come screaming out probably. We're at 60 PSI on the regulator. And yes, it does come screaming out. But you can actually get reasonable but you can see how carbonated it is it's uh, up there with really good carbonated soda water the next step is to do a instruction video on flow control so it doesn't come screaming out of there one of the things is i'll show you we can back off the regulator and then dispense at a lower pressure but that's actually not practical for most purposes but let me show you that so now we're down to about 20 psi i'll grab a glass a chilled glass and we'll see what happens. So you can see we get a slower flow rate, but it, again, it's still, it actually turns out pretty good at this lower pressure rate, but what's gonna happen is over time that your water's gonna drop down to 20 PSI instead of that 60. Most of the carbon dioxide has left the, the water It's got an okay carbonation, but again, flow control is always going to be your issue when you're using one of these or a tap. So we'll talk about that in a future video. And again, we'll talk about carbonating and bottling, because I think bottling is the best way to go with this. Plus, if you're making root beer or something else, and I will be doing a video on root beer in the near future, you can basically keg the root beer and bottle it using a counter pressure bottling apparatus, which I'll show you how to do in a future video. And then you can get the really good carbonation that you're looking for. Anyway, that's how you carbonate water under high pressure and have it ready for whatever use you're going to do, whether that's putting it on tap, putting it in a bottle, bottling soda. But now we have 60 PSI carbonated water and it's ready to go. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.